Hi everyone, Susan here. Thanks for coming to my channel. I am reading your questions, the video requests that I have from you. And I really love this one. Somebody actually uh, bought Breakup Triage. That's my, well, it's an audio booklet and an ebook. And it lays out, I think, the seven steps that to me are the clearest when you're in uh, a meltdown because you just discovered there's been a breakup and it's when you're really emotionally hemorrhaging. This to me is the way to stop that emotional bleeding out and really get you centered. And so I love the fact that this um, person who's written me, this follower, has actually asked me for some clarification on a term and a concept. So this is about the solidity of finding the love inside us and how that changes everything about the breakup and the person that was running away from us as we thought with our love and we're never going to feel it again. So here's, here's what Maggie writes to me. And Maggie, thank you so much for this. Maggie writes, I found your book Breakup Triage really helpful after recently being dumped. I'm 59 years old and was feeling desperate. You write about discovering that the love you were looking for is really your love and belongs to you. I wonder how this discovery has changed the way you approach relationships and how you access this feeling when you're alone. Many thanks, Susan. Maggie, I love this question. Okay, so my big, big, big discovery when I was dating players, and I should have known better, but don't you know, I fell for the one that I should have never fallen for. Oh my goodness, but what a ride. A lot of what I talk about today is from that vital research of going where no sane-minded person would go because I need to get answers. If I've only got decades-long relationships that are wonderful, I've got nothing to say to you, and I had no material. I couldn't help my friends, so I went and dated players on purpose. <laughs> I told you, no, I fell in love with one of them big time. Oh, my goodness. And as I was standing in the window of my apartment building, looking out onto the rooftop of his apartment that was maybe 20, 20 blocks away, I, I had this realization. He was there, I was here, I was still feeling love. He was gone, the love was alive inside me, and then it was like the light bulb went off. <gasps> oh my God! He has nothing to do with my feeling love. It's me. I'm the bank. I am the one who has the love. I can only feel my love. That's all I can ever feel. That's how you can be involved with people that don't love themselves. And no matter how you love them, they're unhappy and they can't feel it and they're dead to it. They don't have the capacity within themselves. So when I realized this, Maggie, I realized it put me in control. It put me in control. Never again will somebody come into my life and then decide to leave. And will I be under the spell that I was under in my 20s or my 40s thinking, oh my God, they've left and all the love is gone with them and I'm never going to have it again. I realized I've got it. So the hurt will never hurt the same way. But I have to be honest with you, please don't think I'm immune to this stuff. I'm a human being like anybody else. There's no safety net for love. We try our best. We're going to win some. We're going to lose some. We're going to have favorable outcomes, and we're going to have some that are not favorable. But as you mature and you learn that you are in control of this love, you're still sad. You're still going to go through a breakup if you get dumped, and that was not your choice. But... You will not be decimated by it because your mind will kick into gear. Oh my God, the love is mine. I own my love. Not that person, not the appearance of what I think is them running away with my happiness. Now, you've asked a, a vital question and I think I answered it in Break of Triage. How can you access this feeling if you're alone? There are many ways that people connect to their own sense of inner power to love. Loving an animal, loving a child, loving a person, doing a loving act. I remember years ago, somebody telling me, if you feel lonely, go give service to others. So we sense love when we are in the act of loving. 
when we do something we love, whether it's painting or walking in nature or meditation or listening to music or giving our, letting ourselves luxuriate in a massage, whatever we're doing, and we're doing something wonderful and positive either for ourselves and or for somebody else, we will have a sense of warmth and reward and good feeling. I know you would rather have a partner, but it is incumbent upon us to be our best friend and our constant partner. Because partners, even if you think they're guaranteed for a lifetime, they pass, they die. Life is very consistent in this fact that things change always and what we think is here is actually not permanent. Most of it's transitory. But what we want to focus on is we want to focus on our ability to feel connected, loving, and united with ourselves. And those are the ways I suggest. Thank you, Maggie, for this wonderful question. I don't get to talk about my own philosophy very much, you know, in, in specific details like that. You get it in the videos, but you don't get a solid dose. So thank you for that. For everyone who has written me, love the commentary, and thank you for your video requests. If you want to work with me, chat me up on Magnify, or go to my website, susanwinter.net. Take a look at the different packages you can get. I'm happy to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. Thank you, everyone.